Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So <clears throat> today I wanted to come back to this ball lightning study which was carried out by Eric W. Davis uh, from uh, the interestingly called Warp Drive Metrics uh, from San Rafael, uh, Las Vegas. Um, because uh, this uh, thing that was actually released uh, on the Black Vault, uh, they've uh, been in the news uh, in the last couple of days when this video was taken because of the, the uh, Freedom of Information Act, uh, looking into the uh, government's, uh, US government's um, mind control experiments. Uh, but anyway, um, if we look, th this study was uh, um, published uh, about four weeks before the Second Iraq War, and it was commissioned uh, at the end of 2001, going into uh, 2002, and uh, uh, it, it covered the period from April 2002 to uh, October 2002. That's when it was conducted. And the interesting thing about this um, is uh, that its conclusion was uh, uh, um, for a worldwide study into uh, technologies uh, that were surrounding uh, effects similar to ball lightning uh, was uh, that uh, Kenny Shoulders uh, charge clusters were possibly the um, best avenue to follow. But subsequent to this report, um, Kenny Shoulders, to the best of my knowledge, did not receive any funding uh, to uh, continue his research. But uh, the other thing that which is uh, redacted uh, is this section here. Now, bearing in mind this was a uh, uh, fund research uh, sort of review was funded by the Air Force Re Research Laboratory. Um, down the bottom here, um, it talks about um, uh, the fact that there's another aspect that was classified. And this classification code here, I've looked up in the US statutes, and it actually means um, that it was classified because it has military or space applications. Um, and uh, the... Um, uh, it's talking about uh, research uh, that was conducted uh, by the Air Force, uh, funded by the Air Force, uh, in the 1950s and 1960s. Uh, okay, so that being said, I wanted to try and find if there was anything out there um, that could fall into this kind of area of the 1950s and 60s, which would be <clears throat> related to uh, uh, you know, may potentially Kenny Shoulders or, or or ball lightning or something like that, uh, because this looked, you know, it's all related. So I went to yesterday actually, uh, looking uh, at uh, uh, some uh, presentation uh, by Maury B. King uh, from 2013, and I think uh, Maury B. King had spent some time with Ken Shoulders. Certainly, uh, he gives the impression. Uh, because in that particular presentation he's talking about, and this is I think the first time I've heard someone else say it, about how uh, Shoulders said that the, the, um, uh, the, the structures, these so-called exotic vacuum objects, uh, weren't actually melting material. Uh, it was actually just making the electrons give up their bond, like, like making them fall apart. Uh, and this is much in line with the observations that I've seen um, over the last couple of years about how this works. But anyway, so uh, in that presentation from 2013, uh, it was interesting to see a, um, a slide in which he had this. And this I immediately recognized as something very, very interesting to me. Uh, reason being is uh, uh, it's got these two kind of like counter-rotating vortices. And so I want to take you back to uh, the Sochi presentation. Uh, and before I get into that, uh, I, I want to uh, just show you here. There's, there's other things that Shoulder said is that, uh, uh, when he was working with Putoff. Uh, they established that it could be a, a beta emission, a point source of beta. And uh, if we look at uh, this uh, uh, image that I took with a macro lens, of the quartz on the outside of the Lion 2 reactor. Uh, this is the outside of the, this is the copper oxide Cu2O uh, that was transformed. This is the quartz, so-called quartz liner from the looking for heat reactor. And the heater element would have been on the outside here. So it's interesting that the least affected material is right next to the heater element. And the most affected material appears to be near to uh, the uh, outside of uh, the wrapping that was around the 
uh, core, not the actual core itself. So this isn't in the core, this is just the so-called uh, quartz, fused quartz liner. And um, there's things that seem to be fairly orthogonal to each other, and I mentioned this before, there's this kind of strange radiation track here and these kind of uh, bore-throughs like uh, Kenneth Shoulders uh, bore-throughs. But here you have like what looks like a point source and this particular shape, and this is essentially the same shape, but uh, orthogonal to this. Um, and the interesting thing is that uh, in uh, gem production, they can produce like uh, semi-fake gems or interesting gems by taking quartz crystals of various types and exposing them to uh, beta and gamma uh, rays from cobalt-60 and then heating them up to, say, above 650 degrees C. Now, obviously, we know that this was uh, uh, between um, 500 and 800 at least, and, and it would seem from line 4 that maybe up as much as 1,000. 2050 in places and so we can conclude it's above 650 degrees C but in theory the quartz shouldn't change color unless it's exposed to uh, beta rays and uh, we know that it can be a um, uh, a source of uh, uh, according to shoulders and um, the work of uh, put off when they were working together that it can be a source a point source of beta and um, uh, x-rays. Now we know uh, that we have x-rays coming out of it because uh, there's x-rays here uh, and this appears to be coming from a cold reactor that's been placed in these uh, self-developing x-rays. But um, it's it's the beta ray. So essentially we know we've got boring through here with the evos and we know we've got the strange radiation track which is like maybe uh, a fragmentation of an evo and uh, uh, which is itself an evo which is an exotic vacuum object uh, and potentially we've got one here and it's kind of sat there or we've got another one here and it's sat there and it's just essentially maybe spat out beta rays uh, from this point here and from this point here and created these uh, structures and again it says <laughs> you expose quartz to beta uh, uh, radiation and uh, you get canary yellow you can actually get all of these color colors from uh, treatment and uh, uh, impurities so, so how did the impurities for instance get here well we know that evos can carry ions uh, to a particular place in time and uh, then they can uh, uh, emit them. Uh, and so, uh, you know, everything can be easily accounted for of what you're seeing here. And bearing in mind, this is on the upside of the reactor. So um, it, it's very, very interesting. But actually, what I wanted to talk about really in relation to this, um, uh, uh, and I'm just gonna show you here something that's very, very fascinating. Uh, firstly, this particular presentation came from um, the work of uh, one <laughs> uh, W.H. Bostick. Now, why is this interesting? This is interesting because it was Bostick's work which was the, the start point for Kenneth Shoulders to uh, uh, move, go on to discover exotic vacuum objects. Uh, why is this also interesting? Is because it was received at 23rd of March 1966. So that is within this period potentially um, uh, for this uh, potential classified document um, uh, here. Uh, uh, Air Force funded 1950s to 60s and it follows on from Shoulders <laughs> work. Now the other thing that makes this interesting is if you go down to the bottom of the document um, it says here, uh, where is it, that uh, this study was supported by an Air Force Office of Scientific Research grant, the Air Force Cambridge Research Laboratories, and the Office of Aerospace Research under contract, and blah, 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 and the National Aeronautics and Space in Administration grant. So, the, do the research that's talked about in here is classified under this code, which is uh, for military and uh, space programs. Uh, it fits, it was funded by the Air Force, so was the work by Bostick, and it was in this period. So uh, Bostick started his work, I think in 1956 in this area, uh, and continued uh, for a long period of time. But uh, you know, it's, it's very, very interesting that this matches up. 
Now, what's also interesting is I have been asking for the community to find some kind of explanation. So we, we know that um, uh, some might, people might argue that these are uh, chemical effects. This looks like it, it could be an EVO effect. This is definitely, in my view, an EVO effect, just like the strange radiation track we have here. So this is not a chemical effect. This is some physical uh, change to the material that I believe is uh, uh, created by the active agent. So all of these slides, by the way, are available in the Sochi presentation, and there's many links off there if you want to look at it. But another thing that is not a chemical effect is this, which is uh, two counter-rotating vortices. So they've got one there and one there. And in all of these kind of things, you have one that's bigger and one that's smaller. And my view is it's, it's either coming out of here and going splat into there, or it's coming out of here and going splat into there. My, my gut feeling is it's coming out of the bigger one. Um, but the very interesting thing about this is it's, it's fairly similar to this and you've got a big one here where it's coming out and then it's going to splat in here and they're kind of they are overlaid in both cases they're overlaid but i want to go to the videos for this and and and, and show you a little bit more um uh, interesting context before we get to look at the 1966 published work of uh bostic and that is the fact that in the Lion 2 reactor, where these swirls occur, and this is, this is about 8 millimetres across, and it's I think it's something like 12 across the whole affected area. So it's a very, very macro structure. Um, but the interesting thing is that it's absolutely perpendicular. It, it's like orthogonal. It's like 90 degrees out of uh, the, the B field of the... Um, solenoid that is the heater in the looking for heat uh, tube furnace so you have the coils coming here it's going like this and you have the B field that will be going round like this and this is absolutely 90 degrees it's across the structure you can see in the close-up here uh, if I pull out uh, you can see uh, up here would be the the heater coil goes like that and and the field is coming through like this and it's exactly 90 degrees now if we look at the uh, image for uh, this one, uh, uh, which is a close-up. It's a little bit pulled out here. This is from line one, so it's a different reactor showing a similar structure, but this has obviously got lo lots more detail. Uh, same overlaid type uh, effects, and that we can look at in this video. And if you look at this, this is exactly in line with the B field in the line one core. So it's uh, you've got your coil solenoid going around here, and it's exactly like it's not off at an angle. So you, you have two structures here that seem to be uh, in an orientation that would suggest it has something to do with electromagnetism, gravity, these kind of things. It's like the the ninety degrees out of phase aspects of this. Now, if we actually look at the underside uh, of this area, so what I've gone is just, just gone a little bit forward in the video. So we, we're having a look there, and then we're, we're rotating, it, rotating it over. You can see, and we mentioned this before, and if I actually go a little bit further on, maybe that'll be clear. Okay, there seems to be this area here that, uh, uh, and this is on the top of the reactor, where it swept something all the way round, all the way round, like it's, it's moving the material around here, and on the underside of this, uh, the, the gravity side of this, uh, where the gravity field is, is, is applying from the, from the Earth, uh, if we go there, uh, you have this uh, counter-rotating vortex pair. So this is the underside. So gravity was applying through this area. Uh, we have the B field going through here, and we have this material swept around here, and we have this uh, two uh, counter-rotating vortex pairs. So, um, uh, that, that's the easier one to, to explain of the two uh, here, uh, certainly, uh, or maybe. And I really want you to guys to think about this. Uh, you know, you might have all kinds of suggestions for really what's going on here. In this case, I'm not so sure that, you know, the, the, this was the sort of end of the re uh, reactor. Maybe it was here. I think the main core part of the reactor was here. And this might have been just outside of the heated area. Uh, I don't know, but it, I think it probably was in the heated area where we saw this uh, um, particular structure being formed in line one. So, you know, the, the, there's that. And then there is also this structure, uh, uh, the 
what I call the two spots. So you've got lots of matched uh, pairs. So I can actually, in theory, get these to play through their uh, uh, pairings. Uh, is it going to do it? Yeah, it's going to do it over there. Um, do it over here. Yeah, so th these are the pairings which uh, led me down a little bit of a rabbit hole where I thought, oh, I've seen something like that before. And the thing that I'd seen before, which was a bit like that, was these uh, half solitons. Okay, now, um, essentially, uh, if you uh, put a plate into a swimming pool and you push it like that, it creates these counter-rotating vortices and they have a little dimple, like a, a whirlpool, uh, on either side that are counter-rotating and that lenses the light of the sun uh, away from the um, uh, sun uh, so that it lenses to the bottom of the pool and uh, it creates these dark shadows. Now um, this led me on to this uh, sort of conclusion that uh, maybe the solar prominence uh, uh, prometry or whatever you call it, the, the magnetic flux loop here uh, astrologers would know more about that. Uh, it, might, it might be analogous to that and that these dimples here I would expect to see on the reactor and that there's x-rays coming out of here where we know that uh, EVOs can produce x-rays from the work of shoulders and uh, uh, put off and uh, they, they are emitting through this structure that's been formed by this uh, magnetic flux loop and that that causes the equivalent of the pool shadows except the light is not uh, now in in the um, uh, visible range, it's now in the X-ray range, and that exposes the X-ray film where Lion had taken the core reactor, uh, 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 the reactor, put it in here when it's cold, and those tracks are formed. So this would imply that actually the structures that did this um, are fairly static in place, and so. I went back to the uh, X-ray machine and, uh, sorry, the scan electron microscope looked at this area and I found all of these uh, matched pairs of, um, maybe I can play this, these matched pairs. And, and I've discussed this before. So why is this relevant? Um, well, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go back here to this structure. This for me is outside of the core of the reactor. It's not really, uh, although I do need to look at this point here because that may have played a role, but it's, it seems to be in a, a 90 degree to the B field. Um, it seems to be on the underside uh, of uh, the effect of gravity. Uh, and it has these clear counter-rotating vortices. Typically you have one that's slightly bigger than the other and they overlap. And you've got the same thing here. One slightly bigger than the other and they overlap and this one looks like it's coming out and there's a fractal component to this and you can see there's a, a, a kind of yin yang component as well here in this uh, fractal part to it. Uh, anyway so then uh, to take it back to the Bostock, uh, Bostock paper um, I mean I'm just going to read a fair ch few chunks of this. But firstly what I want to say is um, that this was uh, in the, so, sorry for the shaky camera, I don't have my uh, camera stand at the moment, so uh, it is what it is, uh, and uh, it's tiring to hold it up. You can see at the top there, uh, it's from 1966, it's pair production of plasma vortices, and this is in the physics of fluids, okay? This is published in the physics of fluids. So if, if you go back here, you know, I, the other place that I'd seen this that uh, led the, to me to this conclusion was this uh, a work, uh, uh, this reactor, or rather processor, that I saw in Suhas Ralkar's lab that I took some high-speed photography of. And this is basically a kind of analogue of what I'm thinking about. And it's producing these uh, toroi. Uh, and what, I, what, I, what they also do is they... You know, if a big one's formed, it can suck another one into it. Maybe you just saw it there. And they're, they're self-organizing, and they're really quite amazing. So this is a fluid. This is the physics of the fluid. Okay, and we have, in this case, the vibrational uh, input uh, is sound uh, in the audible range. Or in fact, actually, a large proportion of it's in the uh, ultrasonic range. The audible is really uh, harmonics. And this is a frozen in time. So you, you have this wave function around it. You can see it spiraling around. And uh, you can imagine it's, it's moving in this direction because it, it has to move more material on the outside. So it's kind of like dragging itself uh, uh, through, through the water. So, you know, I, I initially thought, actually, 
that um, this uh, would be a full loop, okay? Uh, and uh, that that was my assumption, but the important thing was to find, uh, to see if there was anything on the outside of the reactor, uh, which we found, uh, and so forth. But there really hasn't been an adequate explanation for why there is this, and this is this is eight millimeters and this is 12 millimeters. There is no adequate explanation and, and that's been given. And this was put out like maybe 10 months ago. Uh, so let's go back to that Bostic paper. Uh, so, da, 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 da. Columnar plasma vortice, uh, vortex filaments parallel to the rot uh, uh, and rotating around the lines of the background magnetic field B0 parallel to B0 vortices uh, have been produced in two uh, 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 breast pairs by a small plasma button gun fired uh, across uh, B0. These two breast pairs of vortices are observed with electric field probes uh, and density probes to proceed across the magnetic field B0 the generation of plasma vortices in plasma flow over magnetic dipole has been observed by probes. Anyway, a uh, couple of things. Uh, Force-free plasma vortices uh, where the filamentary axis is perpendicular to the background field B0, uh, perpendicular to B0 vortices, uh, have been observed by Wells and Small to be produced by conical theta pinch. Uh, Wells and Small have demonstrated experimentally that these vortices have helical, force-free type magnetic fields. Small has now demonstrated, in addition, that these perpendicular to B0 vortices also have mass flow, which is roughly collinear with these helical fields. Interesting. Could that maybe explain the movement of the material uh, around uh, the uh, uh, core? Um, is, is, is that related to that? I don't know. I need to maybe do a bit, bit more thinking. Could that be some mass flow that's being occurring here? Uh, don't know. Um, and then it goes on, uh, which is coded into the hit. We now show in figure two, uh, an image converter photograph of the plasma coaxial accelerator with a hexagonal center conductor in which, uh, spec spectacular radial filaments are observed to occur in pairs on each flat side of the hexagon. We believe that these bright radial filaments represent perpendicular to the B0 forces uh, of the force-free type which are created in pairs uh, and so on. So uh, he's referring to this particular images and you can see these pairs being formed here uh, on each face and it's 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 kind of like uh, equidistant in from the end that the actual uh, uh, focus points of those occur um, <laughs> and he goes into some detail I'll give you a link in the uh, um, description of this video to all of the associated uh, uh, videos and uh, this particular uh, paper from 1966 uh, da, da, da. One member of the pair should be co-rotating and left-handed. Uh, the other member should be uh, contra-rotating and right-handed. Investigations are now proceeding to determine the detail with uh, coupling loops and uh, density flow probes, uh, uh, the magnetic and density flow structure of these filaments. Okay. Um, goes on to explain uh, some physics behind how they could occur. Now... Mather and Kalishnikov et al. have photographed similar radial uh, striations. So this was replicated. Uh, in fact, a number of people seem to have been investigating these things at this time. Uh, in their coaxial uh, plasma accelerators, Mather observes the maximum neutron production occurs under the conditions when these radial striations initially are fairly uniformly distributed around the center conductor. So we're talking about neutron production here. This is interesting. This could cause some uh, transmutation. Very interesting. His neutrons are produced at the moment when the discharge, and he goes on here, coalesces into a pinch at the end of the center conductor. Uh, the right photograph, uh, figure two, and, and he's talking about 
this up here. That they've got a pinch at the end here of the conductor. Um, uh, the right photograph figure two shows a bright spot formed by the coming together of the perpendicular to B0 vortex filaments at the end of the hexagonal center conductor. The author suggests that the process is similar to the production of solar flares in the atmosphere of the sun by the coming together of such structures as described by Gold and Hoyle. Wow. Wow. So here I am, little old me, don't know much about anything, <laughs> and I'm, I'm coming from these x-rays, uh, having seen this, having seen this, and this being related to it, and seeing that it just looks like this, and uh, that these could come together and represent something similar to a solar flare. And there's nothing new in heaven and earth. <laughs> Here we have Bostic, the military-funded research uh, that inspired Ken Shoulders, saying exactly the same thing in 1966 with observations that were replicated by multiple labs across the world. Wow. Okay. So uh, the authors uh, now suggest that the striations observed in Mather and Kalishnikov et al. may be also perpendicular to B0 vortices, and that these vortices may possibly play a role in the neutron production at the end of the center conductor. Uh, the authors also suggest that the striations observed uh, by Kvartskova in the Z pinch and theta pinch and by Bodin in the theta pinch may be the same type of perpendicular to B vortices. <sighs> uh, anyway, so uh, you can you can have a, a look into this. Uh, this is the uh, wonderful chart in question. So if you can imagine the material is producing a magnetic field here, maybe there's some sort of electric thing going this way, and the electric field stimulates, I, I don't know. But uh, look at what this is actually saying here. Diagram showing how perpendicular to B0 vortices may be expected to develop in pairs in the plasma coaxial accelerator with a hexagonal center conductor. The general geometry is somewhat similar to that expected from uh, resistive instabilities in the tearing mode. Okay, uh, that might be more to some people than others. But then this is super interesting. Okay, why? Diagram showing how parallel to B vortices may be expected to develop. So this is just a hypothesis. Expected to develop in pairs out of Raleigh-Taylor flute instability. V, uh, sorry, V, where's V? V, V, V down the bottom uh, left here. V is the plasma flow uh, uh, velocity. G here, G is the effective gravitational G felt, effective gravitational G, felt by the plasma as it is decelerated by the gradient B. Okay, so we have a gravitational influence here, effective, so is that it's now lower or it's higher gravitational effect? So <clears throat> in this paper we have a connection between uh, things that inspired the discovery of EVOs, uh, things that support uh, these observations, uh, uh, <laughs> these, these observations, these observations, these assumptions uh, and hypothesis, and these uh, observations that you see here. Now, when I was in Sochi, uh, we took the uh, uh, Hutchison coral sample to um, Synthes Tech Labs, and we did a test uh, on uh, that material. Uh, 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 that material, uh, and it's here. So we put it on this uh, XRF detector, and the purpose for me was testing soliton loop on coral Hutchison effect sample. Now, if we go and play this, let's play it. 
Yeah, so this video is all there. So now what it was was uh, I found two candidate points, uh, where you, one where you have one of these sort of crystals that seem to form in these craters. And these look like they could be candidate points for a soliton uh, uh, flux loop. Um, and at this point, still, I'm thinking that these things are, you know, full loops. And they may be full loops, but, you know, anyway, we can see what we can see on the surface here. And again, we have a bigger one and a smaller one. And these are at the center point of what would be assumed to be these kind of, uh, uh, let's find that again. Um, these, uh, where have we got here? Yeah. This would be kind of at the center point. So these are the two center points of these vortices. Now you can see that the, the, in this case, it's, it's drawn them close together. Our observations that they have an effect over quite a range, but you can see that clearly uh, in there, there is they're clearly separated in uh, these observations by Bostic, uh, which are apparently uh, observed by other people at the time. So um, what we did was we looked, uh, and the assumption would be is that if the material was coming out of here and coming into here, like like we observed in uh, this, this is one impact. As far as I was. Uh, concerned this was one impact and the material that came out of it was this and this has got a high ratio of calcium and it's not the same as the material around it and in this case uh, this is a different um, this is a sort of a flux loop and it's got this material that's come out of it uh, and it has a different uh, uh, elemental ratio you know uh, if there are uh, if this is part of the same loop the assumption would be that, um, that that they would have the same uh, elemental sort of ratios, and you know we we only tested we just found one candidate loop, tested it, and it, it was really quite stunning uh, because uh, in fact I'll play this video through, but you can watch it separately. Um, it's it's quite short. Sorry, I just had a call here where I'm staying, so I had to pause that. You can go and have a look at the video. But essentially, um, what it is here, those two points, uh, the, the data is overlaid. And essentially, every element that's in, in, in one point is in the other point, And there's just a, a, a itty-bitty uh, bit of difference. When you actually look at the data on here, uh, they are almost uh, uh, the same uh, uh, for each of the aluminium, iron, copper, zinc, sulfur. It, really, they're almost exactly the same. Um, so that was quite amazing. And then uh, Chistelinov that was with me, he suggest, suggested other than these two points, why don't we have a look uh, in a point that's uh, somewhere between the two to see if it is different. And sure enough, there were other element concentrations, uh, not elements that we had in the two, these two points, and the concentrations were very uh, different. Um, so th this was very, very satisfying. Now I'm gonna go and get the sample because there's just something I wanted to discuss. So here is the sample <clears throat> and uh, it was on one of these faces where the, these uh, two points were and the central point that we tested. But uh, the other interesting thing, and, and, and I'm waiting for the data to come back or for the test to be done at the Russian Academy of Sciences, but we cut off the end of this and what is interesting about this is, well, apart from it seemed to find some very strange elements in there, uh, like tantalum and, and uh, uh, well, all kinds of strange things, um, uh, which probably aren't there, but uh, it's just because that happens with Lena things. Um, the uh, effect doesn't seem to go through. Now, we need to look at the crystallography in here, and they'll polish that down and look at it uh, in the way they can. But... My assumption uh, that it's going all the way through, it may actually be all going all the way through, but when it comes to the impedance mismatch, uh, the business actually starts to get a little bit strange and uh, it then does this uh, transmutation and, and so forth on, on the material. So this is, this is the coral sample and you can see that it's not going <clears throat> all the way through. So perhaps when we are looking uh, at these structures, maybe there's a maybe there is a, a, a full loop going on there, 
or maybe it is just from the surface out and and, and down or maybe it's just it gets affected um uh by by the loop uh, in in the direction that it's going so it's going around like that and it's twisting and it's uh twisting anyway so uh i want you guys to have a look at these various videos um uh Think about what he was saying about the neutron production being on the, the pinch of these things. Uh, there's a, a lot of information to get here, but really we have a, a multiply replicated experiment uh, conducted in the 1950s and, and 60s uh, that are uh, claimed to be uh, effectively producing the same thing as solar prometries. Uh, uh, these uh, uh, magnetic flux loops uh, and here uh, we it's, it's published in um, fluid dynamics paper uh, you know this is fluid dynamics this is fluid dynamics this is fluid dynamics uh, so could it be that something is produced which is actually some sort of torsion field or some sort of spinning vacuum that's actually disrupting the material here because this is not within the main part of the heater. Uh, this is just the bend and, and then the coil starts from there onwards. You can see it in, in the video uh, here. Uh, you can see, if I go back, uh, you can see that it, this is here. There's the main part of the heater. The hottest part will be somewhere in there. So this is outside of the heater. The actual, the tip of the uh, reactor came to somewhere about here in inside there. So it's nothing to do with being in contact with any chemicals, it's otherwise clean, and uh, no one's been able to explain it, but it looks like something happened within that, uh, that maybe there was some uh, thing going around here, uh, going around here that's causing this movement of material. Uh, that's enhancing the B field that's coming through here, and along with the gravity, uh, it's causing something to come out here, which is affecting the quartz, not by temperature, but by disrupting the electrons, as Shoulders said to Morrowby King. Uh, it's actually disrupting the electron bonds and able to move the matter. Um, and that is potentially what we're seeing here. And potentially these flux loops can join together just like they, they, they do on solar Prominences, prominences, I get that word wrong. But anyway, it's coming out here and they're kind of kind of joining at the top here. And you're seeing the same thing here. We, we know when you push a plate through water, it's going to be there all the time. But they get bigger and move out apart, but <clears throat> they keep their the sort of wormhole, uh, this uh, half soliton. And maybe there really is a half soliton. <clears throat> maybe all of these are actually half solitons or they're full solitons. Uh, I would suggest that they are full solitons. Um, from the point of view um, that uh, it, it, if you can have material in them, it, unless it's teleporting from one side to the other of the half soliton, it has to go through the material. And when it's going through the material, it basically has to have no dimension. So it's, it's like a wormhole. It's literally spinning around in the material. And when the, the confining field breaks down, the material just spits out uh, and it comes out as whatever element it was uh, uh, stably uh, structured as uh, it, within that particular loop and as I've said before uh, when these are oriented with the surface uh, like in the uh, this Hutchison sample again down down at this end um, uh, you have these loops and so maybe you have the thing going around here but there's a loop going around here and a good like that the two circles overlapping they have these circles of material and it, it's it's like light elements on the outside heavy elements in in the core so uh, it's it's almost a fractal structure in its own right. Um, so uh, it's been an interesting journey this year, uh, and this really was one of the hugest questions for me. Uh, this and this is on Lion Two, and this structure on Lion One, and uh, similar structures uh, observed on uh, Hutchison sample from 2007, and having this. Uh, mystery here really piqued my interest and to summarize we have this paper which was funded by the two bodies uh, under which uh, it, it was claimed to be funded uh, by the Air Force this is funded by the Air Force this fits the, the time period and the, the, the bodies that funded it are the bodies 
under which the classification for this uh, was made. And uh, it is the inspiring work for Kenneth Shoulders from which he discovered Evos. So thank you very much for your time. Sorry for the shaking video. Um, if you feel this work is useful, uh, please consider making a donation. It really helps. Uh, and check out the other links uh, in the bottom of the video. Thank you.